I'm really looking forward to this trip because over the next few days I'm going to be fishing the wonderful Western Park in Shropshire which is run by RH Fisheries. Now this particular water is steeped in history, it's a capability brown built estate lake which is just enclosed in some of the most magnificent trees that you're ever going to see on a fishery. Now some of these trees must be two or three hundred years old. Everywhere you look you're just seeing different shades of green, it's gorgeous, it's a stunning property. Very shallow, lots of weed about as well and uh, during the course of the year there's a, a really exclusive syndicate that runs on here but there is one particular area which is available to all and that's the wonderful boathouse which is what I've got available over the next few days. So let's go and take a look at the boathouse itself and the swims that come with it. So let's have a look inside then. And this is the boathouse which is a, a listed building, it's a very very traditional property and it's perfect to bring your girlfriend as well as sort of share it with a few mates if you want to. There's a table there obviously, dining table. There's a bait freezer, a microwave, sink, fitted kitchen, kettle, toaster, oven, all the utilities and bits and pieces that you need. So it is absolutely lovely. And as we move through the building, this is the bedroom, two beds, Lovely traditional looking property, you've got a TV down here as well, a little couch and then you've got the shower and toilet as well. This is the shower, perfect to get a, a wash after you've hauled one of those big ones. And then you've got your own little viewing area as well out there which is nice and private and um, you've got a toilet as well which is uh, just through here open the door. Yeah, a toilet is a toilet, I know. But there you go, there's the toilet. And when you come out of the boat house, you basically, you get three swims. And obviously there's a little picnic area you can get. And this is the swim that I'm in. This is the right hand boat house swim. And just have a quick look in here. And there it is. Rods are out at the moment. And the area that you're fishing to is that far bank over there. Nice and shallow. The fish move across from the left hand area of the lake or the right hand area of the lake. That's basically the interception point. It's uh, right slap bang in the middle of the lake. Brilliant area. And you get this swim and then you get through here. This is what's called the African tree swim where you go through all the rhododendron bushes. Absolutely gorgeous to look at. Very, very scenic and very private as well. Here we go. And there's the African tree, which is one of the most outstanding trees I think I've ever seen, let alone on this fishery. That is gorgeous, it really is. And this is the swim, the African swim, African tree swim. Look at that. You've got access to all that area that's out of, out of bounds on the far bank over there. You've got some nice close-in spots as well down here to the right off the reeds, as well as some open water areas. Brilliant swim. And then the third swim that you get is the left hand boat house swim, which we're going to have a look at now. And you access this area, the left hand boat house swim, through the gate. We go through the gate, and there it is. This is the left hand boat house swim. Again, the, the best spots really are against the far margin tight in over there where it's out of bounds. You can go around there to bait up but there's no swims over there so the carp love to patrol that area. You've obviously got some nice close in spots as well. Just down here a set of pads which is really nice and then just off these reeds. But look at that for a lake. Absolutely stunning. You're not going to find a better lake than this in the UK. A better looking lake I should say. This is the swim that I've chosen and this is the right hand boat house and I've got three rods out, just put them out now, and the area that I'm concentrating on is that far bank margin over there. Now that particular margin is out of bounds. You can't actually fish from over there, but you can go around and bait up, and that's basically what I've done. Is I've gone across to that, that side and spread liberally about 10 or 15 kilos of buoy all the way along that length, and uh, I've got the left hand rod tight into the margin over there towards those overhanging trees, just where the reeds are, and then I've got the middle rod towards those rhododendron bushes in the gap there and then the right hand rod in the gap towards those trees. Now the chances are that all three of those spots get fished every single week of the year but um, 
I'm hoping that by there being only three rods on this side of the lake, fishing across to that margin, that in itself is going to work in my favour and I also think that by putting out quite a lot of bait, which I have done to start with, is also going to encourage one or two of those fish to, to go into that area and have a feed. But we'll see how things progress. We can always chop and change things during the course of the few days that we've got here. But I'm going to start off with just fishing during the nights. Just put the rods out now, it's late in the evening. I'm just going to have a bite to eat now and, and just watch the evening settle in and then uh, fish the night and then tomorrow morning going to get up with Lucy and uh, we're going to go and do a few touristy things in the area so there's going to be no lines in the swim during the course of tomorrow day and certainly during the course of the first few days that's exactly how I'm going to fish things. Bring those lines out, try and encourage those fish to go into the swim and then have a feed at night so uh, let's see how things go but certainly for the time being that seems like a decent plan and we'll just uh, take things from there. First night on Western Park, ended up with two lovely fish, and this is the beast of the two, a 27 pounder. Really, really gorgeous setting, as you can see behind me with these beautiful rhododendron bushes, and an absolutely gorgeous fish, so a great way to start my week. I know a lot of lads like to know about the gear that's being used, so we'll quickly run through what I've got here today. Now on the rod front, these are the Nash NR2 rows. Now these are the 12 foot 3.5 pound version. These are the brand new rods from Nash. For quite a while I used the NRs, but I've stepped up to these only in the last couple of weeks and I must say they are a fantastic replacement. Cosmetically they look lovely and performance wise they're a great casting tool as well as a, a really good playing tool as well. So I'm very happy with those. Now these are loaded with the BP10s. Now these are the new Black Ops BP10 reels. They're a budget reel, but I must say for what you pay for, they are absolutely fantastic. They really are. There's a lovely smooth drag system there, and uh, you know, all round wise, I must say, first rate, very happy with them. And these are loaded with uh, 15 pound decam line. And as we move along the setup towards the indicator, these are the R3 alarms. Now, R3 alarms are absolutely first rate. These are the best alarms that I've ever, ever used. I've used quite a few alarms over the years and I'm one of these anglers who it does tight line an awful lot and I, I absolutely hate false bleeps and there's one thing that the uh, the r freeze does sort of boast over other alarms is that they really don't give out any false bleeps if something's bleeping it means that something's happening at the business end so first rate alarm now if you've seen any of my uh, recent video blogs you'll know that I've for quite a while I've been using the solar indicators uh, I used the butt banger indicators for, for quite a while and the reason for that is I've never really been into the indicators that Nash has brought out over the last few years. I've, I'm very much like a, a rigid arm indicator and it isn't until only the last couple of weeks that I've changed over to these and they really are fantastic, they really are. I can see me using these for quite a while now. So I'll be very happy about that because he's always nagging at me for, for using other companies' gear but um, I must say I'm one of those anglers who will only use gear that I really do like and at the moment I'm really much into these slap heads and uh, the r freeze brilliant alarm. So that is my setup really happy with it and it works for me. Got a lot of weed out here which is uh, proving a little bit of a problem. A lot of that blanket weed. Don't know if you can tell at the moment but they've uh, put some of the blue dye in the water to try and kill it off but there's loads of it, loads of blooms of the, the algae all over the place which this fish has been in and out a bit, in and out a bit, but he's moving at the moment, so. He's weeded again now. <laughs> oh, he's moving again. Well, the fish that I caught last night really did fight hard, and uh, this one is pretty much the same, weeding himself again.
Well, we got him in the net, but uh, not a great fight at the end because of the weed, but it uh, doesn't really matter how they fight as long as you get it in there, so it's all in the net. Well, the fish went absolutely mental last night, ended up with four during the night and uh, one just before dark as well. And at first light, the fish went absolutely mental. They started topping all over the place. Some really, really big fish coming out of the water as well. And this is the beast of the group, of course. So, smiling a lot, but uh, certainly very much in need of sleep at the moment. But a great way to, to have my second night on Western. Well, the rig that I'm using for this trip is pretty much the same as the one that I use wherever I go. It's uh, a simple braided hook link. So I'm going to run through it now, and it's literally just a, a lead clip with a three and a half ounce lead, and you've got a swivel in there, and then you've got some stripped missing link hook link. This is discontinued, but I've still got some uh, in my tackle box, which I really like. It's very firm and very strong. And as you can see there, I've just got a size 6 Fang X hook, which is not as knotted. A little bit of tubing over the top of the eye, which forms the liner liner. And then we've just got a single 20 miller on the hair. So it's nothing fancy at all about the rig. It's just the same old thing that I use wherever I go. Loads of confidence in it. And it definitely works on lots of different waters. So uh, I know it's going to work here. First light, it's got to be one of the best times on the water, certainly for me at the moment it is. And this morning has produced this lovely character, I mean this is a real old fish, this, this must be one of the oldest fish in the lake. Jet black, lots of marks and scars all over him to tell his tales. And uh, today he put up an absolutely colossal fight, he really did. I thought I'd got one of the big commons the way he fought, he was very very hard all the way in. But equally, I've been very, very pleased and very fortunate to have caught it. So very, very much the icing on the cake of a brilliant trip. Final morning then, and that is a truly wonderful sight to wake up to. And last night I ended up with another couple of fish. So my final tally for the six nights of fishing has ended on 15 fish with a couple of 30 pounders. I've had a really great time. Many sort of fish during the, the afternoons and the evenings and the nights, resting the swim in the mornings and uh, the middle part of the day. But it's been a great few days, so my thanks to RH Fisheries for inviting me down here. And if you're ever interested in having a trip yourselves, then visit the RH Fisheries website where you can make yourself a booking. Thanks for watching.